Hi you guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Charlotte. Thank you so much for being here with me again. Today we're gonna go over some very coveted, hyped up in some cases, niche samples. These samples were sent over to me by Twisted Lily. This video is not paid for or sponsored by Twisted Lily, but they did give me a discount code for you to use. You can now use at all times Charlotte 10 for 10% off all fragrances, full bottles, and samples. And that is actually my favorite part of Twisted Lily. All the fragrances they carry a full bottle of they also carry a sample size for you to discover as well, which I just think is essential when it comes to niche perfumery, especially as a fragrance lover, you want to try all the fragrances, but you don't necessarily wanna buy all the full bottles of those fragrances, right? They also carry a lot of niche discovery sets and sample sets, which I think is an amazing way to sample fragrances. It's also an amazing gift to give anyone who is into fragrance as well or anyone that you think is maybe looking for a new fragrance but they're not sure what to go for let me know what niche fragrance you're really intrigued by that you want to try out that you would like to sample let me know down below all the fragrances i'm going to talk about today you can buy the sample size use my code charlotte 10 for 10 percent off and you know maybe come back to the video and sniff them along with me and we can share thoughts down below so today I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have like I have like a dozen fragrances here. They did send me like a questionnaire to get to know like what kind of notes I like and don't like and things like that so that they could kind of like narrow it down. I have some favorites and I have some not so favorites. <laughs> In those fragrances that they sent over, there were two fragrances that I already have full sizes of, so um, I'm not going to go into those. Like, I'm not going to test them out here. I have talked about them on my channel before, but just for the sake of, you know, this whole experiment of testing them all out, I am going to mention them. The first one is Marfa by Memo, and this is a beautiful green fleshy uh, buttery tuberose fragrance. I say fleshy. It really feels, it feels fleshy to me without being, uh, animalic or too carnal. It feels fleshy, creamy, buttery, uh, and fresh at the same time. It's just a beautiful, beautiful tuberose fragrance. It smells a little bit green without being too green or bitter or anything or aromatic or anything like that. And yeah, I like to describe this as like fresh, creamy, buttery tuberose fragrance, but I picture like a wet jungle kind of vibe from it. It's a very unique fragrance to me and I love this fragrance. I have a full bottle of it. Yeah, just a beautiful fragrance by Memo. I encourage you to sample it if you enjoy tuberos or even if you're like not a super big tuberos fan, but you're open to trying another tuberos and seeing if you might like it because not all tuberoses are the same. This one goes in a very unique direction. Like I said, it's not bubble gummy. It's not too carnal. It's um, very smooth and a little bit green and fleshy in a buttery sort of way. The other fragrance that I already have a full bottle of is Erba Pura by Zerjoff. This is a very widely known fragrance in the fragrance community. Probably don't need to go much into details on this, but it is a very, very strong beast mode, wide projecting, long lasting, fruity, musky fragrance. Very fruity, a little bit sweet and very musky, very potent, quite unisex, and uh, yeah, just a joy to wear. Definitely too strong for some people. A little bit less easy to wear than like Memo Marfa. Memo Marfa is a lot more natural smelling. Zerjoff uh, Herba Pura is a lot more, yeah, a little bit more synthetic smelling. Very, very potent though. Um, yeah, Herba Pura, great fragrance. Definitely worth sampling if you like the idea of a very, very strong, fruity musky scent so let's start the first fragrance that i was so excited to try this is very hyped up and it's also the first fragrance i got to ever try from this house so i was very excited so this is by wilhelm wilhelm parfumerie and this is poets of berlin this is a fragrance that i really didn't know what to expect from i'm going to take it out just to remind myself like yeah Maybe I will spray these again. Like I tried these out a few times, you know, and really took my time with them. 
but just to remind myself a little, I might, I'm gonna consult my notes here, okay? So if I'm looking down, ooh, nice spray there. Yeah. So right away, this reminded me of something and I couldn't figure it out. I thought it was maybe like Marc Jacobs Decadence, but it wasn't that. I was like, no, it's not that. It really smells just like something else I've smelled and it's not something I love, but it's something that feels very likable. It feels like a fragrance that I should like, but that I don't like for some reason. So this is very a very sweet, fruity vanilla fragrance. It felt a little bit flat for me and maybe that's just because I smelled it before and I was expecting something else. I was expecting more and it turns out that the fragrance it reminds me of is Wild Vanilla Orchid, which was pointed out uh, Anna Lauren. If you don't follow Anna, she's amazing. But Anna Lauren recently uh, said basically that Poets of Berlin or Wild Vanilla Orchid by Floral Street is a dupe of Poets of Berlin. And I was like, oh, that's the fragrance. That's the fragrance it reminds me of. And the reason I forgot is because Wild Vanilla Orchid is not a fragrance that I have a full bottle of, but I do have a sample of it. And I had the same impression that was like, it's very well loved. Wild Vanilla Orchid and Poets of Berlin are very well loved by people, but there's something in it that I do not love. It's like, it's very pretty, but I'm not captivated by it entirely. And I don't know why, because it is very nice. It's very pretty. It's a creamy, woody, vanilla, very fruity, very sweet on the skin. It does get a bit woodier as it dries down. Moderate projection, moderate lasting power is what I got when I tested this out on skin. I did test these for the most part, if not all. Yeah, I tested these all, all out on skin. It's very pretty, you know, like, and I would wear it, but it would not be my go-to fragrance. Like, it's not like, yeah, it's just not the best. I don't know what to say other than it's not a love. It's just a like, basically. Yeah, it's a like, not a love. Very nice. And I feel like, I guess the reason I'm so kind of ambivalent about it is that it feels like something I should love. I feel like I should love this fragrance, but I just don't. I don't know. Like it's so pretty on paper right now and it's pretty on my skin too. But there's something that just doesn't feel quite right about it for me. And it's the same feeling I had for Wild Vanilla Orchid by Floral Street. So there you go. For me, Poets of Berlin is a no. It's, it's a no that's kind of like, if I had it in my collection though, or if you gave it to me, like I would wear it, but I'm not gonna go out and buy this because it's not, it's not really a love. It's just a like for me. So that's Poets of Berlin. The next fragrance I was super excited to, to try out is by another house that I've never tried before. And this is Atelier Mate, Materi. So this is Haute Parfumerie Française. It's, it's a French house, but Materi is not French. So I will have to look into the house a little bit. But um, I was very excited to try this because I've not tried anything out by this house before. And from the name, I gather it was an Ambrette fragrance, which I was very excited to try. I really enjoy Ambrette. So my first impressions with this fragrance, I'm gonna consult my notes because I wrote notes for all of these, was that I would get kind of felt like I got black tea and woods, which I don't think there are those notes in the fragrance. So yeah, I felt like I got black tea and woods. There's none of that. It was probably the ginger and maybe the angelica. For some reason, it was getting me woody black tea in the opening. On skin, however, it was very different. This is a fragrance that was very different for me on paper and on skin. So on skin, I got the ginger mandarin opening very strongly. And so yeah, I didn't get that opening on paper. I did not get the ginger or the mandarin on paper. On skin, it was there and it was prominent and other than that though, it was too faint. This is a very subdued skin scent and I got some green woodiness out of it on my skin, but I did not get enough muskiness. I wanted more, I wanted more muskiness out of this fragrance and it was just not enough. It was very nice, it was very pretty. Like I enjoyed this fragrance and I'm gonna spray it again here to remind myself. Yeah, it's so funny. On paper, I understand that the, the black the black tea and, and woodiness. It does dissipate though. I don't know if I have a piece of skin I can, piece of skin that I can spray on because I had other fragrances on me and I don't want to disturb that, but here. Yeah, 
yeah, I get more of that Mandarin ginger on skin, not so much on paper, but it's very pretty. It's very pretty. It's not sweet. It's quite woody. I guess bois d'ambrette. I mean, it's more the wood than the ambrette, I guess, or it's, yeah, there's bois. There's, there's wood in it. It's very pretty, and I will have to test this out more, you guys, because... It's very understated and I like that about it. It's just there are such powerhouses in this pack of fragrances that I got, like other fragrances that are such powerhouses that this one kind of fell under the radar because of that. But it might just not be, you know, it might be an everyday fragrance that's more understated. It's not the star of the show, you know? So I do want to test this one out a little bit more on skin, like a few more times to get full fleshed out feelings about it but I overall was not super impressed by it I was just expecting a little bit more and overall the time that I wore it I found that it had low projection and that it kind of disappeared very quickly it might be that I'm anosmic to it as well but even right now like I just sprayed it right and I have to bring it right up here to smell it I do get more of that ginger mandarin though now it's really nice on the skin yeah it smells very different on the paper it disappears on the paper, which is a bad sign for me because usually on the paper, it lasts even longer than on skin, you know what I mean? So unfortunately, this is a no for me, at least for now. Bois d'Ambrette, very pleasant, nice, but just not enough going on for me and not, yeah, not enough presence. The next fragrance I tested out, I was very excited to try as well. I also had a, a subscriber or a follower on Instagram to tell me how much she loved this fragrance too. So I already knew that some of y'all love this fragrance. I didn't know what to expect though. I was very excited. I will say that the sample is so elegant and pretty and nice. Like it just feels like a full bottle experience almost, uh, which is really nice, you know. So this is an Extrait de Parfum. This is Peregrina by Tamine. And this blew me away, you guys blew me away <laughs> this i literally like i i sprayed this weeks ago i still smell it on the paper okay this is a very strong fragrance i'm gonna spray it again even though it's precious now i want i'm foreshadowing already i'm giving it away that i want a full bottle but this is beautiful okay this is a super potent beast mode rose and caramel fragrance very beautiful. It's quite ambery and woody as well. It's very sweet, but it's more um, it's more fluffy to me than syrupy sweet. If Bois d'Ambrette was leaving me wanting more, this is complete. This is this is so complete and nuanced and beautiful. There's a musky and ethereal element in it. Uh, mixed with these bold elements, with the rose and the elang and the amber. The only thing was I wasn't entirely sure if this would suit me in the sense that I don't know when I would wear this. This is a very fancy fragrance to me. It's a very upscale. It smells very elegant. It smells rich. It smells like you need to be going somewhere to wear this. It's just, I'm not going to wear this just to sit on my couch. I mean, I will, I will, I would if I had it, you know, cause it's just so beautiful. I love this fragrance, but I just, I just feel like it deserves more. It deserves to, you know, to have a person that is maybe dressed up or that is getting ready for an event or something like that. So it dries down powdery and still very beautiful. And the far dry down is a powdery incense rose caramel to my nose and it's just absolutely beautiful. To me, this is the kind of fragrance, like if you like, and it's not because it smells like it, it's just that kind of vibe. If you like a fragrance like Intense Café by Montal or Delina Exclusif, it's those, it's like that kind of fragrance. It is strong, it's bold, it's beautiful, it's intoxicating, and it's strong in every sense. You know what I mean? It's a strong fragrance olfactory wise you know like projection wise sillage wise lasting power all of that but it's also a character wise like strong fragrance it takes a strong person to wear this it makes a statement and what i love about this fragrance is that it manages to be extremely strong and potent without being harsh and that is something that's hard to do you know uh 
for example, I do like Erba Pura, but it can be harsh. It can be a little bit overpowering. Um, and that's sometimes the trade-off you make for that beast projection and sillage and all of that. This is not that though. This is extremely well-crafted, high quality for that reason to my nose. Incredible fragrance, absolutely worth trying out. Um, and for me, this is definitely full bottle worthy. This is Peregrina by Tamine. The next fragrance is by the house of Italie d'Orange, which is a fragrance house that's kind of like notorious for making fragrances that are not always necessarily super easy to wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, making very kind of interesting fragrances, very experimental, definitely very niche in that sense, and very hit and miss. Some great fragrances and then some fragrances that maybe you don't want to wear, you know what I mean? And they all have a very interesting creative name, uh, some less appealing names. What's one of them that I was really... Anyway, names like I am trash, secrétion magnifique, alluding to bodily fluids, fat, electri <laughs> fat electrician, but then also some kind of, you know, very charming names like Un Noël sur le balcon, a Christmas on the balcony. Their latest release is Frustration, which you can also get a sample of on Twisted Lily. So go do that. I think I'm going to do that because I'm, I'm curious to know how it smells, but with Etat Libre d'Orange, they're not a not that you should blind buy any fragrances really, but especially Etat Libre d'Orange, they're not meant to necessarily be crowd pleasing or easy to wear all the time. So they are, they need to be sampled first. And that's a newer release that just came out. That's a woody vanilla gourmand fragrance with a lot of chestnut vanilla and some rum. Looks very interesting. Looks a little bit more approachable than some of their other fragrances. Uh, beautiful bottle design by the way as well but uh, definitely needs to be sampled. And I would be interested in sampling that one. That one is called Frustration. So there you go with the names, you know what I mean? Uh, this one is She Was an Anomaly. And I was like very intrigued by that, you know? She Was an Anomaly. Oh, I just sprayed it in my hand. That's not what I wanted to do. Oof. I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna take what I got on my hand. I sprayed it on the inside of my hand, like the palm of my hand, my fingers. So I'm gonna be smelling, that just looks bad, man. I'm just gonna be smelling my fingers like this. Yeah, similarly to Bois d'Ambrette, this is one that fell under the radar next to all these other powerhouse fragrances, okay? This is a very tame, it's very skin scent-like, second skin sort of scent. It's a very uh, subtle, but I also thought it was very pretty. It's a powdery, soft, pretty musk. It's a subtle skin scent, but it's less subtle than Bois d'Ambrette, I will say. And it's also a prettier musk scent, in my opinion. So I enjoy this fragrance. It's just that I have other sort of like intimate skin scents, skin musky scents that I already have, and it just didn't wow me, you know what I mean? But it is, it is nice, but for the purposes of this experiment of, you know, trying out all these fragrances, among them, this for me is a no because I already have fragrances like that. Maybe eventually I would maybe be interested. I would have to try it more, you know? Yeah, I would have to try this more on skin, a few more wears, but this is my kind of scent. Like I do like this sort of fragrance, but like I said, I already have some and this one doesn't really add anything extra to me. I would say it's quite unisex too. Like maybe a little bit feminine, but quite unisex. Yeah, there's a soft, a soft powdery sandalwood musk scent. Pretty understated, simple yet effective. Very nice, but I just, it's just very nice, but I have fragrances like that already. And so for now, for the time being, this is a no. The next fragrance was a very, the next fragrance is a very highly anticipated release by Maison Francis Cook Jean, and this is 724 or 724. <laughs> 724. 724? 724. Um, and yes, highly anticipated release, a lot of hype before it's even released, right? And this is a fragrance, I didn't know too much what to expect, but I was excited because I've been on a very big musk kick lately, and my nose has changed, you guys. I just 
gravitate towards different scents now. I used to be very much into gourmand, sweet vanilla scents, and I still like them. I still love them, and I probably will go back to them as one of my first loves as well, but I've just been very enamored with musk lately and fresh musk scents, which are scents that I used to just kind of dismiss, uh, and I'm not dismissing them anymore, you guys. And so this fragrance, I just fell in love with right away. Now, this is not for everyone. And I know that a lot of people have been disappointed by this fragrance. And I think that's because they were just expecting a banger, like innovative, amazing fragrance, like Baccarat Rouge, like Grand Soir, like Oud Satin Mood, like those kinds of fragrances, which are beautiful by the way. But this is not like that. This is a everyday, fresh, citrusy, clean, musky fragrance, exceptionally invigorating and energizing and uplifting. That's what I get out of this. What I fell in love with was how it made me feel. This is a very happy fragrance. It's funny because the whole kind of um, campaign behind this fragrance is a very sort of like I find kind of serious, austere. It's supposed to be like the hustle of city life early in the morning. Um, but I get such a more like joyous sort of feeling out of this fragrance. Maybe that's just me in cities and feeling like concrete and I don't know. That's not the vibe for me. I can get it now. I can sort of understand it. The early morning hustle in the early fall, late summer, which is when this came out actually. But I get more like clean, open field meadows. <laughs> Not city necessarily. It definitely is a very strong, clean laundry scent as well. So you need to like a fresh, clean fragrance to enjoy this. It is a bit of a laundry detergent smell, which might sound kind of like, my goodness, why would you make a perfume that way? But it's, it's done so well. It's so good. It's so effortless. And as someone who loves musk, and that fresh white floral citrus burst in there without it being sharp. I love this. And it's so strong. It's so long lasting. It still projects. It has some, some good sillage and projection. And it's long lasting, which for a fresh citrusy musky scent is not very typical. So I really, really enjoy this fragrance. It might seem boring to some, but to me, it's just that perfect everyday fresh, white floral musky fragrance. It's very unisex, but it's unisex in the way where I feel like if you wear it and you're a woman, it leans a little feminine. If you're a man, it will lean a little masculine. It's that perfect unisex fragrance. That's what uni that's what a truly unisex fragrance is for me. It's so hard to tell whether it leans a little bit feminine or masculine. And that's what this is for me, which I just love. I feel very feminine wearing this, but I could definitely see my boyfriend wearing this as well. And I would, I think it would smell amazing on him as well. I do think this is supposed to resemble very closely another fragrance by this house, which I will put up here. So if you already have that fragrance, this might be redundant, but if you don't have that staple, fresh, clean, citrusy, musky fragrance, this is a great one to have. I don't have that many of those kinds of scents in my fragrance wardrobe. So I really love this. I think if maybe I'd already had those kinds of scents, maybe I wouldn't be as impressed by it, okay? So I am putting that out there. But for me, I'm just in love with this fragrance. And like I said, most notable for me is how it makes me feel. It feels very uplifting, very joyful and happy. And it's not all fragrances that will evoke an emotion. This really evokes that emotion of joy and happiness. It's very energizing. I do get some sweetness that comes through with the white florals, but it's very subtle. It's not by any means a super sweet fragrance. It's mainly a clean musky fragrance. It dries down a little bit more crisp, but it still projects a lot for a fresh scent. It's very cheerful, it's classy and elegant at the same time. So when I say it's fresh and easygoing, it's not necessarily, it's not a cozy fragrance, okay? So for example, another fragrance that kind of goes in this category of like clean, fresh, 
is um, Et Voila by Theo Camanel. But that fragrance has a bit of a cozy feeling to it. This doesn't feel cozy. This feels energizing. So yeah, really, really enjoy this fragrance. Aldehydic. Aldehydic. You have to like the aldehydes. You have to like the white florals peeking through, the soapy white florals peeking through, and the musk, of course. It's like a very concentrated, clean laundry scent. It smells a little bit like very clean clothes that are still damp that are not quite dry. So they still, you know, like they're just coming out of the wash. So it still has that very um, concentrated laundry detergent sort of smell to it. I say damp, I don't know how else to say it because I do get that feeling from this scent and I get it on my skin as well. Picture like clean white sheets that are very damp still, that are blowing in the wind. You've hung them out to dry, but they're still damp. Okay, they're not dry. It's not this like airy sort of fragrance. It's still quite dense. So yeah, I really love this fragrance. It's funny because next to something like Tamin, uh, you know, Peregrina, it's kind of like, okay, well, Peregrina is like the star of the show because this one is just more of like an everyday casual scent, but it does stand on its own in terms of potency. It's very strong. It's a very strong, fresh scent. And I love that about it as well. So 724 is a yes for me. Next up we have Accento Overdose by Zerjoff. And this is another, another white floral, sweet, fruity scent. And I quite enjoy this one. Let me see where I can spray it again. Yeah. So right away, I definitely got the DNA of Zerjoff and like more specifically also a little bit of the Erba Pura vibe, but definitely way more floral, very floral, very white floral, very jasmine forward, but very fresh. So a very fresh white floral fruity fragrance, very strong as well. It does start off aldehydic and soapy a little, but it gets a little creamier and it also feels and smells a little aromatic. It does have a green, slightly medicinal base or facet to it from the eucalyptus in here. And all in all, this is a very interesting fragrance. I do like this. And this is a fragrance that I would like to have a full bottle of. I do think it's full bottle worthy. This is a fragrance that I picture wearing in the springtime, in the summertime, mostly. I do think you need to like that jasmine in there. It's beautiful. Fruity, musky, jasmine. It's a beautiful fragrance. And as I smell it again, yeah, I'm reminded of how beautiful it is. A little bit green, like I said, but not too green. And I think it's important to say because greenness can oftentimes be a big no-no for me and like a big turnoff and kind of be, it can kind of be what ruins a fragrance for me sometimes. But in here, it's just lending a nice freshness to it and aromaticness to it as well. And just making that jasmine a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more fresh and interesting. So enjoy this one. Definitely a strong projection fragrance, big sillage, long lasting. It's a, yes, beast mode fragrance. So that's Accento Overdose. Next, we have another fragrance I was really excited to try out. This is Overture by Amouage. And actually, when I opened my package, like I smelled this fragrance first. This is like might be the strongest fragrance out of this whole bunch even though there's such strong fragrances in here it's hard to say which one is the strongest one but it's an extremely strong fragrance i could smell through the package and this is one of those fragrances that i like i love and dislike at the same time it's a very unique fragrance i've definitely not smelled anything quite like it before it's very woody fruity sweet ambery it's the brandy apple opening in here that smells a little bit like brandy and apple juice. It's very intoxicating. It's spicy. It's balsamic as well. It's really beautiful, but I'm just not sure if it's for me um, or when I would wear it exactly. This is absolutely a beast mode fragrance. It's very strong. It has a leathery base. When I tried it on skin, it had a leathery base that was just a little bit too animalic for my personal taste, but it is a beautiful fragrance. That booziness and the leather are kind of too much for me personally, but I really like the apple in here. <laughs> yeah, the apple with the booziness 
they're really beautiful together. Very intoxicating. Mouth watering without being gourmand. Yeah, I don't know how to describe that. I guess it's because it almost feels like apple juice and brandy, but lovely fragrance. Uh, definitely unisex. I definitely could see this equally being worn by a man or a woman. And yeah, great fragrance. I'm just not sure that it's the fragrance for me. So for now, for me, this is not full bottle worthy, but I definitely think you should check it out if any of what I mentioned sound sounded like it could be for you. Definitely sample it because it's an exceptional fragrance in terms of quality and uniqueness. And then we have another fragrance by Amouage, and this is a fragrance I was really, uh, I've really been wanting to try for a long time actually. So I was excited to test it out. And this is Honor, Honor Woman, because it was Honor Man. And Overture was, was it woman? I'm not sure if it was, Overture was for women or men. But like I said, I think it's very unisex. I just mean, I don't know if there was one for men, but Honor, this is the Honor Woman version. And this is a fragrance that right away I thought I really loved. I had to try it on skin though, because it does evolve, it does change. This is a sweet, mature, classic, beautiful white floral fragrance. It's very dense, it's a little bit creamy. It's very classic, mature in its white floralness. So it does have a little bit of similarities with, yeah, it definitely does remind me a bit of Gucci Bloom, for example, which is a fragrance I really, really enjoy and love, but it's very polarizing. Some people really don't like that kind of white floral fragrance. It's slightly green and tart and ambery, and it's a really, really pretty and elegant fragrance with a complex base. It reminded me initially a lot of Gucci Bloom, but a little bit more freshness, which I welcome because Bloom can be a little bit more oppressive. That said, when I tested this out on skin, and it has to be tested out on skin, it did get more animalic, and it got more powdery, ambery, and incensey as it dried down, um, which for me, I did not love the animalic edge as much. Still very beautiful, still very pretty. I'm just not sure if I would need another bottle since I have Bloom and I'm happy with that one for this kind of vibe. I would say the projection is very moderate, but the sillage is very nice quite long lasting, not at all as beastly, for example, as Overture. Overture is very beastly. This is a little bit more moderate in its projection, sillage and longevity. Still beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Just not sure if I need another one of these white florals in my collection. It's like all the white florals. It's beautiful in that sense. It has the gardenia, it has the tuberose, it has the jasmine, it has lily of the valley. It's like, all the white florals you could want. And it's beautiful and creamy and dense. But like I said, on my skin, I didn't love the dry down as much. And I get that beautiful, dense, creamy white floral bouquet from Bloom by Gucci. So they're not exactly the same, but my favorite part of it, I get with Bloom, you know what I mean? So I do think it's worth exploring if you love white florals. This is a beautiful, complex, classic white floral fragrance. Beautiful fragrance. This is Amouage Honor Woman. And then last but not least, I'm gonna mention this one because it's one that like I have a decant of and I absolutely love and want a full bottle of, but I already knew this fragrance. I was already very familiar with this fragrance. And this is Jerjoff Naxos. And this fragrance, you guys, especially this time of year, is just so, so, so beautiful. Right off the bat, I'm getting a lot, a lot of that lavender, but there's tobacco in there, there's vanilla. It's an extremely unisex fragrance. A lot of people feel like it leans a little bit masculine and usually unisex fragrances that lean a bit masculine are not my thing. I don't love them usually, but I feel so womanly and sexy when I wear this, when I wear my decant, like I love this fragrance. It's just so beautiful. It's a little bit fresh spicy as well, but to me, this is such a wintry fragrance. Like I would wear this at Christmas. <laughs> this is so beautiful. It's tobacco. It's like warm, spicy, herbal, aromatic, vanilla. I need to spray some on my skin. Oh, I love this so much. 
Oh, it's so much more beautiful on skin. But yeah, I get a little bit of that citrusy opening. The lavender is dry and herbal and aromatic. There is some jasmine in here, some white florals that come out, not yet, but I know this fragrance enough to know that when it comes out, it's just so beautiful. The jasmine, it has some honey and cinnamon in here. So it's beautiful in the opening and the mid, but the base is just absolutely captivating to me. It's a tobacco tonka vanilla mixture that's just absolutely intoxicating to me. So classy, so elegant, so refined, yet um, approachable at the same time. There is nothing sort of, for example, Peregrina by Tamin is a little bit more, is, is very classy and refined and elegant, but like I said, I feel a little bit like I have to be more put together or like going somewhere or something. Whereas Naxos, I could in that situation wear this, but I don't have to, like I would wear it just at home with myself for myself. And this is a personal thing, you guys, you know, like obviously you can wear fragrances how you want, whenever you want, however you want, you know, and you don't have to reason, you don't have to have a reason to wear them. But I'm just being honest, you know, about what I would gravitate to for whatever reason in case it's helpful to you guys. But Naxos is just absolutely a beautiful fragrance. It's absolutely full bottle worthy to me and for me. And I fully intend on eventually getting a full bottle of Naxos. I highly recommend that you sample this fragrance. You can get a sample, like I said, of this fragrance at Twisted Lily. Use my code, of course, Charlotte10 for an extra 10% off. And so yeah, I would say overall, you guys, overall, my top fragrances of all in this mix for me were Tamin Peregrina, 724, Zerjoff, Accento, Overdose, and Naxos. Yeah. Maybe not Accento Overdose. I'm trying, not that I, I love Accento Overdose, but I just mean like as my top pick. I'm going to keep it to a top three. Top three is 724, Peregrina, and Naxos. Those are my top three. And actually, interestingly enough, they all kind of fit a different bill, right? 724, for me, can't really be compared to something like Peregrina or even Naxos because 724 is an everyday fragrance. It's a fresh fragrance. It's an out of the shower fragrance. It's a gym fragrance. It's a you need something to uplift you and get you going fragrance. Um, Peregrina is your going out fragrance. It's your elegant evening fragrance. It's your night of a lifetime fragrance. Naxos is your classy, elegant day and evening fragrance that you can wear all throughout the fall and winter. So there you have it, you guys. Those were my takes, my thoughts on all of these fragrances. Let me know down below what your thoughts are on any of, and all of these fragrances. If you have any favorites here, if there are any that you would really like to try out. Now you know going forward, if there's ever a niche sample that you would like to try out, check out Twisted Lily first. They don't carry all the fragrance houses, but they carry more and more and they have an amazing selection of fragrances on there. Use my code Charlotte10 for 10% off. Thank you so much for watching you guys. Until we see each other again, take care of yourself and I'll see you very soon. Bye.